everybody loves to seem to like the digital fireplace. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it's kind of quaint, right? Digital age. Fireplace doesn't give you warmth. Yeah, not the real thing. Everything's fake today. Everything is fake. Um, after I saw at least no less than 30 comments that were exactly the same on three different YouTube channels, I thought, you know, I've seen 30 comments that are entirely wrong. One of the YouTube channels forthwith made that statement and implied it. It's like, this must be something that people don't understand. Oi. Let's harken back to, uh, I can't remember their name. They're two identical men. They're literally identical twins, except one of them was born with a birth defect. They both look exactly the same. The guy with the birth de defect has some weird, unpronounceable, uh, hereditary, uh, with some sort of genetic disease that if he starts to run, his uh, something happens in his blood sugar and it will basically give him a heart attack. So no matter what this guy does in life, if you like me, right? <laughs> no matter what this guy does in life, he can't run or, like, he gets stressed out in doing it. You know, he can't, like, run down the street or, you know, run to his car if he's late. Both of these guys, identical twins, look the same, standing side by side. Same weight, same appearance, same haircut. Uh, I think this is a show on medical mysteries. What does this have to do the hell with photography? I saw over 30 comments that were almost exactly the same. They said, uh, if you look at the raw and the JPEG, you know, you can, the, the, you'll see that they're the same. You can get a great image out of a JPEG. That's, that's not, that's skin deep. You're only, you're like the twins. You're only looking, both of these guys are the same. They're identical twins. No, they're not. One of them has great potential to do certain things. The other one, it does not. They both look superficially identical. But right underneath the skin, they're not the same. If you look on your computer, typically, you would go over 100%. You're going to see the differences regardless, especially in tonality, especially if you do a black and white conversion. You'll see huge differences in micro contrast. Do you know the number of tones that are captured in a RAW file versus what are captured in a JPEG? Do you have any idea? Do you know that there's really no such thing as a JPEG? A JPEG is processed from the raw data that is clocked off of your sensor. Your camera does not produce JPEG. A JPEG is produced from raw information. Raw is the collected information of the totality of the AD converter and the SNR firmware of the image that is clocked off of your sensor. Technically, I call it clocking the image off your sensor, giving a... Uh, a uh, point for uh, each data point of uh, and where it exists and what color it is and the intensity on it. There is no such thing as a JPEG image, number one. Now you can save an image as a JPEG, but your camera produces raw data. I, I don't know what people don't get. I think they just don't, fundamentally don't understand. They literally think that since you can look at, uh, if you shoot a raw and find of the exact same image and look at them side by side, that you'll see the same thing. And that's not in question. But that doesn't mean, therefore, a JPEG... Now, nobody gives a damn what you shoot. I'm not saying, nor has anybody implied, that you need to be shooting raw. I mean, if you want to buy a $6,000 camera and fill it full, full of dirt and, uh, you know, uh, grow tomato plants in it, nobody really gives a damn, do they? You do whatever the heck you want. I'm not saying either, as someone else implied, that shooting raw data therefore makes you a professional. That's like saying buying an expensive camera makes you a professional. Of course it doesn't. The notion that you're going to buy a halfway decent camera, and that would be something like $300 or more, and not shoot raw, or at least raw plus fine, even if you only want to process a JPEG. You know, you can use countless free applications to uh, drag or create, excuse me, create uh, JPEG images from your RAWs. I mean, where, where do you think the JPEGs even come from to begin with? Superficially looking at two images at 100% does not tell you anything at all. Well, yeah, they look the same to me. You know, I stand back here. I got a huge monitor, 27 inch, and uh, they both look the same. They both make good. That's not the point. That is not the point at all. Sure, it's the point. 
No, I mean, on what parallel world are you living where you don't understand the difference between potentiality and actuality? A JPEG is pure actuality. You certainly can tweak a JPEG. I've tweaked countless of JPEG images in, uh, in, uh, in a photo software, usually cheap applications on MacBook Air, you know, and upload them to uh, Flickr or whatnot. Just busy. Mess the uh, files I want to later. You're getting paid and you're not shooting raw? If you're taking your work seriously, you don't have to be taking it seriously. There are countless times someone goes out with a camera, not expecting to do that much, and they captured an image of a lifetime. If you shot that image in raw and JPEG, and you weren't didn't capture it in raw, you better hope and pray that the image is absolutely perfect. And even if it is perfect, you don't have much latitude for doing a damn thing with it. You just don't. Um, several other commenters have said equally ignorant things. Um, some even claim to be professional shooting sports. Now, I do know that Reuters, for example, now demands uh, JPEG images, but the reason for that is that they demand image. They had an, an issue with scandals where so many photographers were uh, photoshopping the images and they didn't want uh, images that were not true to what actually was captured with the lens. And uh, there's a reason for that. And they wanted originality of the photos so that uh, people were not manipulating them. I mean, they, that alone should tell you worlds that they only take JPEG images instead of RAW files that have been uh, processed and manipulated. I just don't know what people don't understand. Well, I mean, I do know what people don't understand, but it, it's entirely wrong-headed. It's entirely wrong-headed. Yeah, these sports photographers are assumed they're not sports photographers. I know they're not. Because if you're a working photographer, not, not only is inexpensive gear unimportant, well, why isn't it? Because it's a freaking tax write-off. Like someone who drives and delivers stuff in their car, they write off their gas and uh, their wear and tear on their car and their taxes. If you buy an expensive camera so you could sit there and drop a crap load of images in the raw, someone said, well, you know, I can't hold the buffer down on my camera, and I shoot for a living at sports games. Do you? And they're complaining about why they shouldn't be shooting RAW files. If that's the case, then why the hell do you have a cheap camera that can't shoot a string of RAW? I mean, the D500 and the Nikon D5? Even though I can't stand the D5. I mean, they'll sit there and rip off a pile of RAWs until the card's full. Who the hell are these people talking about them being professional sports photographers and therefore they shouldn't shoot RAW files because they don't have much of a buffer? Well, if you're a professional, if you were really, and I don't believe these people that they are, because if they were, they would know better. If they were actually a real sports photographer, then they would own a halfway decent camera that would let them shoot a string of raw files and not have the camera choke on buffering. Canon makes cameras like that, Nikon does, Nikon D500, Nikon D5, even the D4S. These, cam these are tools. They're just freaking tools. And not only that, if you're actually making your money doing it, then the camera is technically free at the end of the year. It's a tax write-off. It's a tool for your damn job. Or if you're shooting for another company, depending on the company you work for, they might have you pay for half the camera and they pay for the other half, but still your camera will be a tax write-off. Half of that will be a tax write-off at the end of the year. You get a receipt from your employee, your employer, excuse me. This notion that uh, viewing a RAW and JPEG identical images at 100%, they they both look the same. It's no different than those two twins. You know, looking superficially, skin deep only, is, is it's just stupid. I mean, that's like uh, saying you're going to date someone because she's hot. It's like, yeah, she's also got a lot of incurable diseases, you know, that will, like, kill you. Well, she looks hot, though. That's exactly what these people are like that are talking about JPEG. Oh, JPEG, my JPEG looks just good 100% as the RAW file does. Therefore, shooting JPEGs is a valid idea. That's just as valid as saying you should date that chick and have relations with her because she looks hot. It's like if you look beyond skin deep, you'll see that there's incurable diseases there. A JPEG is kind of like a hot chick with incurable diseases. While it is attractive, there's not much you want to do with it. <laughs> Is that a good analogy to keep it in your brain? This video really is the angry photographer. There's no situation in which, unless you're totally a casual photographer that doesn't give a poop in hell about missing an... Oh, so what, uh, you know? His image is overexposed, I shot it in JPEG. 
Yeah, but it was just a brilliant shot. You know, it was like once in a lifetime image, but it's a JPEG. There's not much I could do with it. Recovering the highlights is basically impossible. Dynamic range can't be tweaked. It was, it's, it's there. It's cooked. Just remember the fact that your camera doesn't even make JPEG images. JPEGs are created from the raw data clocked off of your sensor. All of those, uh, all of those uh, statements, the 30 plus that I saw, were absolutist fallacies. He's speaking about pure superficiality. Well, you know, photography is superficial. It's about images. Yeah, well, if you want to talk about images, then let's talk about what's underneath the skin of those images. One is literally skin deep, and that's a freaking JPEG. It's there, boom, it's done. The other one has enormous amount of depth. It's like a piece of silly putty. You can stretch it and squeeze it and mold it. The other one you can't do a damn thing with. Well, you can a little bit, you know, you can a little here, a little there, you know, but no. You're talking about a ratio of one to a thousand. A JPEG would be the ratio of one, and the, the RAW file would be a thousand. A ratio of one to a thousand or more than that, actually, for what you can do with a RAW file that you can't damn well do with a damn JPEG. <sighs> uh, <laughs> God, I can't even believe I saw 30 plus comments like that. It's like, God, you know, ignorance is okay. There's nothing wrong with ignorance. Everybody's ignorant about countless things, but the point of divergence is, is that if you see the truth and it's logical and it is verifiable and it's like, well, you know, I was wrong. I was ignorant on this topic before, but now I'm not. Thank you so much. There's a difference between being ignorant and finding out the truth and still wanting to stick with your ignorant ideas. This is why you are not your beliefs. Well, I believe the JPEG's just good enough because it says so right here in the box. <laughs> you are not your beliefs. What you believe may or may not be the truth. Well, I believe in so-and-so. Who cares what you believe? I'm interested in what the facts are, huh? Whew. Oh, my God. Welcome to the Internet, boys and girls.